So for number 11, the graph looks something like a little bit like this. Um, and then there's several options, but if you can see here, the slope until this point is positive, like this, because this graph is increasing. And so when we're trying to find f prime, and this is a graph of f, we need to see a graph that is pot like f prime must be positive until that point. Well, until that point, because and then at that point, then it goes negative, and then it becomes the very most negative, like here at the origin, and then it starts getting pos like less negative. And so it starts getting closer to the x-axis, and then it becomes positive in the end. And then this is the this is the correct graph, and that should be answer B. Okay, so for question number twelve, we're trying this. We're given f of x equals e to the two over x, and we're trying to find f prime of x. And so to do this. You can use the, well, I think it's helpful to rewrite e to the 2 over x. I'd like to write it as e to the 2 times x to the negative 1, which is really just the same thing, but I think that it's easier to see it as that. Um, and then we have to use the train rule. So first we take the derivative, the e, derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so, so the derivative of e to the 2x the negative 1 would be e to the 2x the negative 1 times, then you have to use the chain rule, so the derivative of 2x to the negative 1 is going to be negative 2, you have to subtract 1, so it'll be 2x to the negative 2, but then times, oh, sorry, times the negative 1, because that's what we yeah. Um, and then you can rewrite that as negative 2 over x squared times e to the, now you can just use 2 over x again, and then that should be your answer, which is d. Okay, so for number 13, this is the information we're given, and we're trying to find the derivative of f of ln of x, and so this problem also also uses the chain rule, just like number 12. Um, and so if you're taking the derivative of that, it'll end up being the derivative of the derivative of x, uh, or, here, just, it'll be f prime of ln of x times the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x. And then we know, oh sorry, this is, oh yeah, and so this is f of x, this equation right here, and so we have to make, so f prime of x equals 2x plus 2, and then if you're trying to find f prime of ln of x, you plug that in for x, and so it'll be 2 of x plus 2 equals f prime of ln of x, and then So then you do that times 1 over x, like we said before, so that divided by x, and that should be your answer, which is a. So nothing about f prime of x is given, which eliminates answers a, b, and c. Um, d is not correct because we know the sine of f double prime to the immediate left and right of x equals 1. And just because f double prime of x equals 0 doesn't mean that there's an inflection point. So the sign of f double prime must change to be an inflection point. So the answer is e. <laughs> so in this problem, we'll be doing substitution. So we'll let u equals x squared minus 4. One sec. So substituting, we get du over dx equals 2x. And then 
if we multiply by dx and divide by 2, we get du over 2 equals x times dx. Okay, so then we find the antiderivative, and we get 1 half of the antiderivative of du over u. And then when we find the antiderivative of that, we get 1 half ln times the absolute value of u plus c. And when we plug in uh, what u equals, which is x squared minus 4, we get our final answer, which is that. Yes, lovely circle and a stop. All right, so by the second fundamental theorem of calculus, g prime of x equals f of x. So that means that g double prime of x equals f prime of x. G has a point of inflection where g double prime equals f prime changes sign. And that happens when x equals 2 and x equals 5. So that means the answer is C. Star that. So we have our starting equation, y equals x squared plus 3x plus 1, and y prime equals 2x plus 1. Plus 3, right? Oh, yeah, 2x plus 3. Okay, so for x plus y equals k, when you solve for the slope, you get m equals negative 1. <laughs> okay, so um, for 2x plus 3, which is the slope of the first equation, equals negative 1. Solving for x, we get x equals negative 2. So to find y, we plug back in negative 2. So f of negative 2 equals negative 1, which equals y. So when we plug in all the answers that we have, we get negative 2 plus negative 1, which equals negative 3. So the answer is A. And we start. Yes. Double star. Oh my god. So this is essentially a perfect example of how we can use L'Hopital's rule by uh, taking the derivative of the top and the bottom. So that's essentially what finding the horizontal asymptote is. So right now we got um, the limit as x approaches infinity from the positive side equals 2 to the x times the limit times ln of, the, of 2 over negative 2 to the x times ln of 2. And that equals negative 1. Now to find the limit as x approaches infinity from the negative, or negative infinity, or whatever. No, that's positive infinity. <laughs> okay, so limit as x approaches negative infinity equals 5 plus 2 to the x over 1 minus 2 to the x, which equals 5. So the answer is E.